we unfold, we get better. Every one of us, every single day gets better. And so what I'd like to take the last couple of minutes to you, with you and, and ask you to keep a concept in your head. When you're brushing your teeth at night and you're sitting there kind of <laughs> look in the mirror and see the person looking back, eyeball to eyeball, and ask them, have I been graceful today? Have I been principled today? Have I stood with moral courage and done the right thing today? And look at that person in the eye and make sure that they're nodding back and they agree that this is a good day. And now you can have your rest and your sleep tonight at peace because you've done the right thing. You stood on the ground of principle. You stood on the ground of honor and character. And you may have your rest. Somewhere in this room, there's somebody going, what are those principles, man? Yeah, come on, what do I do? Where do I start? So my last two ideas are this. Here's one. Love thy neighbor as thyself, or do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Racism, chauvinism, homophobia. You can list all the hatreds you want. All of them are based on fear and hatred. Stand on the ground of principle. Love that person back because they deserve the right to be loved. The second one, a young man wrote this in the sand while he was being tested and challenged. He wrote in the sand and he said, ye who is without sin cast the first stone. Thank you very much. Our final speaker tonight is Elise McCurdy's. Dr. Elise McCurdy's started teaching at Principia in 2009, and she is an alumni of the college. Prior to working here, Elise was a graduate student at Michigan State University, where she served as an instructor of American history. While at Michigan State, Elise won history department awards for her teaching excellence and from the Jewish Studies program for her course on American Jewish history. As a graduate student, she presented her dissertation chapters at several conferences, published a book review, and was invited to join the Honor Society of Phi Kappa Phi. Elise teaches courses on American history and Latin American history here at Principia and was voted Teacher of the Year last year. When not working, Elise enjoys spending time with her husband, traveling to the West Coast to visit family, serving in the Sunday school and on the board of her branch church, and running. She currently lives here in Elsa with her husband, Mark, who is a Christian science practitioner, and their little kitty here in Elsa. Welcome, Elise McCurdy's. Hello, everyone. Well, I think it's a little tough for the historian to have to go after a rock star, an Olympian, and someone with a South African accent. <laughs> so I'm really going to try to hold my own up here. I also wanted to say that I actually wrote a talk prior to tonight. And after the recent events on campus, it just didn't seem quite appropriate any longer. So I wrote this talk this afternoon. And because it's pretty fresh, I'm going to have to ask for you guys to excuse the fact that I'm going to essentially be reading it to you. But I felt like it was um, a better fit. So I'm going to talk about character unfoldment tonight and how it provides opportunities to grow in our understanding of ourselves and our relationship to God. When I thought about the title of this talk and how we all want to be awesome, the first thought that came to me is, if you want to be more awesome, work at expressing God more. Now, sometimes expressing God seems so easy and natural, effortless awesomeness. But other times in our lives, it seems like a real mental and physical struggle to express God. Now, we know these challenging moments are really just character unfoldment opportunities. 
We've all had these times in our lives when we felt overwhelmed, scared, confused, but instead of succumbing to these feelings, we've persevered and been healed. I've found in my life that the qualities of courage and determination helped me through the most challenging moments to find healing. Since these qualities have been so helpful to me, they are what I'll focus on tonight. These two qualities, courage and determination, are really a package deal. If you have one, you definitely have the other. And they are so important to our demonstration of Christian science because they bring healing in trying times, whether it's a physical challenge or simply finding a sense of peace. Having courage and determination means you're a fighter and you keep fighting because there will seem to be a lot of awful human scenarios we have to battle. As Christian scientists, we are battling against the world's belief that life is limited by matter, a false belief that can be presented to us in many disturbing or disheartening forms. Mary Baker Eddy knew being a Christian scientist was tough, tireless, but most importantly, rewarding work. Mrs. Eddy knew how much good Christian science could bring to mankind and how important it was for her students to keep working at their demonstration of this divine science. She counseled her students to never give up, but to be alert and ready for battle. In miscellaneous writings, Mrs. Eddy stated, all God's servants are minutemen and women. As of old, I stand with sandals on and staff in hand, waiting for the watchword and I will be faithful and obedient, and God will do the rest. It's a bit of a paraphrase. It takes courage and determination to be faithful and obedient to God, trusting that our Father Mother will do the rest. Now, early workers were willing to stand against any threat or danger to persevere in their study, practice, and establishment of Christian science. Miscellaneous writings includes an account by a gentleman from Wasion, Ohio, who had been reading Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures for a year and a half and experienced some wonderful healings. The gentleman explained that even though people were antagonistic to his demonstration of Christian science, going so far as to tell him he was fit to be institutionalized and that local physicians threatened to have him arrested, he refused to stop his practice, stating, I walk straight on knowing well in whom I trust. When I want to think about people who express courage and determination, I think about the early workers and all the struggles they went through to support Mrs. Eddy and start our movement. But I don't want to just glory in the past. I want to express and demonstrate these qualities right now. And what I found is that in order to bring about my own healing work, I need to cement my understanding of these two qualities. I think for most of us, what makes our healing work in Christian science seem challenging is when we try to heal a problem, don't seem to heal it 100%, and then it keeps cropping up in our lives. Now, while this can seem frustrating, what it actually means is we have the pleasure of working through this situation until we really met it, because there are no easy A's in Christian science. So instead of being discouraged, we can meet these challenges with courage and determination. Let me give you an example from my life where I had the pleasure of meeting and finally mastering a series of difficult challenges. One time when I was in grad school, I was faced with a scary situation that seemed completely overwhelming and terrifying. I was driving home alone in the middle of nowhere, running out of gas, my cell phone was running out of charge, and I was completely lost. I also am not the biggest fan of driving in the dark, and it was about 11 p.m., pitch black, cold winter night. Now, how did I handle this situation? Not very well. <laughs> not with courage and determination. I essentially completely freaked out and was at the point where not a single Christian science truth flickered into my frantic thought. It was as if I had never heard of God, never heard of Mrs. Eddy, never been to Sunday school, nothing. I forgot how Christian science had healed and saved me in numerous instances, and how it had helped and healed my family. My dad had been protected when the small airplane he was flying in 
The engine stopped. It started to go down. The pilot said to him, are you a praying man? Because I'd start praying. My dad did. The engine restarted. Or there's the example of my mom who, after having me, was told she could never have any more children and certainly never have them naturally. Well, nine years later, she had my wonderful younger sister in a completely natural home delivery. What could not Christian science do? But in that moment, that situation, it seemed so real, so scary, I forgot. Now, once that terrifying experience was over, which is another testimony, I was really disappointed in myself. I mean, I was a class-taught Christian scientist, and if you'd heard that conversation, my end, between me and my parents, you never would have guessed. So I decided I really needed to learn more about my relationship with God, to understand that I had dominion over these human errors that were thrown in my path. I really worked on these ideas of courage and determination, knowing that if I were to face a similar scary situation, I would meet it with Christian science and not a meltdown. Now, when I say I worked on these qualities of courage and determination, I worked on them. I mean, I really did. I wasn't just like, oh, I'm God's perfect child, courage and determination, blah, 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 I'm so awesome, I'm off, bye. I mean, I really dug in deep, and I put those into my daily life so that in every scenario that came up, in these tiny incremental moments, I expressed these qualities. I prayed specifically to know that as a child of God, it was impossible for me to not express these qualities. And I demanded that I bring these into my daily experience. So I wasn't just knowing the truth. I mean, I was knowing the truth. Now, remember how I said all these great opportunities will keep cropping up in our lives where we get to prove these demonstrations over and over? Well, I certainly got my chance at my retest, if you will, to prove that I could demonstrate the courage and determination necessary to overcome a sense of fear and panic. Here's what happened several months later after my late night driving adventure. Okay, imagine you are me. You are out running with your roommates, 6 a.m., cold, dark fall morning. It's in your neighborhood on the Michigan State University campus, which is about the size of a small city. All of a sudden, your roommate starts sprinting, sort of like that girl in the clip, and I had no idea what was going on. So I went to chase them. I think I'm good. I started chasing my roommates, trying to figure out, why are you running so fast all of a sudden? I catch up with them after a couple blocks, and I say, what's going on? And they say, didn't you see that guy? The guy in the scream mask, the MSU sweatshirt, and nothing else? And I was like, gross, no, I didn't see him. But I certainly did a moment later when he jumped out from the bushes and said super creepily, hello, ladies. Whoa. Now you're thinking, how is this a character unfoldment moment? How is being chased by a man in a mask with no pants on going to make you more awesome? Well, I might have been asking that same question, except I realized, aha, this is my opportunity. I will not panic. I will express courage and determination. So obviously this guy is up to no good. I mean, he's chasing us around in the dark with no clothes on practically. We are pretty scared, okay? It's dark out. There doesn't seem to be anybody awake. There are no cars on the road. By this time, we're running down the yellow line because we don't want to be next to any bushes for him to jump out at us again. And instead of panicking, I am praying. Now, I'm not going to say I'm at the point where I could have turned around and said, thus far and no farther, take off that mask, go home and put on some pants. <laughs> but I was able to listen to these angel messages, and this angel message directed us to a house where at 6 a.m. a group of 18-year-old guys was awake. What? I know. And they answered the doorbell promptly. These guys happened to be students in my roommate's class, so she felt confident, secure to go into this home. We were able to call the police and file a report, and the officer drove us back. Now, I can say that I truly am grateful for this experience because it meant that when faced with a potentially dangerous scenario, instead of just freaking out and panicking like before, I met it with courage and determination. And these qualities are so key in our demonstration of Christian science. It's so important for us to really embrace them and claim them as our own. 
So my parting thought is, don't be discouraged if trials keep springing up in your life, or if it seems like the same problems keep repeating over and over. Instead, see them as learning opportunities to express courage and determination, to prove your dominion and awesomeness. And really, in light of recent events, I think more than ever, we as individuals and a community need to embrace courage and determination. This will help us as we heal a sense of loss and grief. When faced with these challenges, we can hear the angel messages we need for comfort and guidance. This will give us the courage and determination necessary to continue with our own practice and demonstration of Christian science. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elise. Now we're going to have a quick stage change and have all of the speakers come up for about 25 minutes of Q&A. We're going to stop at 7.30 to enable all of you to get to dance production on time. So if you'll bear with us for just a moment while we get the stage set, that'd be great. Thank you. All right. Thank you all so much for being patient. We have Louise and Reed and JD who are roving around with our microphones. So if you have a question, just raise your hand and they'll swoop on over and you can ask your question. Thanks so much. Light's bouncing off my glasses. <laughs> don't, don't, don't all stand up. Yeah. <laughs> I think, you should, I think you should throw something. Yeah. I think you should show us how far you can do a demonstration or something. Rip this off and have on a... Like an Olympic a, a, jersey. You know, my USA attire. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's your good girl. <laughs> Now, can you hear me? Yes, okay. Thank you so much for all that you shared. Um, I was wondering, Merle, when, when you had the dream of being an Olympian, like how early you, and what inspired that? Like, did you see the Olympics? Were you one of those that you're like, I wanna do that? Or how did it come to be? Um, I, as, as a young girl, I was always very active. I mean, I was climbing trees, I was doing all the, the stuff. And you'd, you'd hear about, um, You'd hear about the Olympics, and it wasn't just the Olympics. It was a lot of other things that I heard about being a young girl um, that were basically out of what they called out of reach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, my mother always encouraged me, and I do have to say my mother's here Yay. with me. Um, <laughs> um, she always encouraged us and told us that you know, whatever you wanted to be, you could be. You know, that there were no obstacles there. And um, I just always had that desire to just be physical. And, you know, when I, when I fell running the hurdles and when I wasn't as good as everybody else, something in that made me feel like, you know what, I really can do this. I know I can. And that drive just snowballed. And it has continued to snowball. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this isn't Wednesday evening. We can get up. I mean, you can say things. <laughs> I know we have protocol to follow, but. Thank you for sharing. Um, I, a lot of you shared things where your character moved you forward. Um, and from Andrew, we heard from how it helped other people. Um, I'm wondering how, how you find character in your lives helping others. Anybody, you both did, sorry. Yeah, Ward? I'll go. Um, that's, that's my greatest joy. Um, when I was literally 15, that's what I knew I had to do. Um, I just knew that that would be part of my life and I've been truly blessed to have continuous opportunities through coaching rugby. Um, uh, it took me many years to learn, but kind of college age men in rugby, 
they're a great fit for me. I find that the, the sport um, demands so much of the athlete and, and I can be that catalyst that says, come on, you can go further, you can go higher, you can be a better man, you can rise to the challenges that you face and, uh, and you can glory in the results. And I think the, um, to me, that's, that's my greatest joy is, is to, like you were saying, when, when you see the young girls competing and, and blossoming, that, that's, that's, that is the greatest joy of all. Uh, winning is great, trust me, I love it. I, but I will take character over winning every single day of the year. I think one of the things that's interesting, I, I talked about my, one of my friends who was in AA. Um, I had no idea, actually, that he was in AA. And he was, he's a drummer, phenomenal drummer, a guy that I play with a lot. And it wasn't until I'd been working with him for a couple of years, and one day he came up to me, and he's like, you know, I just want to tell you. He's like, I don't tell many people this. He's like, but, you know, I've, I've, when, I, when he moved to 